um, they can detect a jet that is wobbling. Uh, this is the jet pointed towards the sun from 3i Atlas, uh, which is surprising because it's in the direction of the sun, whereas usually cometary tails uh, uh, go away from the sun uh, because they are pushed by the solar radiation pressure and the solar wind. Uh, and in this case, we see a jet pointed at the sun, but it's wobbling. It originates from a base which is very close to the pole of the rotation axis. So just like the Earth is rotating, imagine this object, 3i Atlas, rotating, and imagine the base of a jet very close to the North Pole, for example. And then uh, as a result of the rotation, the jet would uh, move along uh, a cone uh, and will uh, create, just like the beam of light from a lighthouse, would basically wobble in the sky. And uh, we see that, and the wobbling is only at the level of eight degrees, a uh, very small angle, but uh, it can be detected by careful monitoring of the direction of the jet. Now, what this means is the jet is pointed towards the sun, and it must mean that the rotation axis of 3i Atlas is very close, within eight degrees, uh, from the direction to the sun, when the object was very far from the sun and approaching the sun. And the chance of that happening at random is half a percent. Uh, now, what's even stranger is that this anti-tail pointed towards the sun is still there now that the object passed close to the sun and now it's heading away from, it's receding from the sun. We still see a clear anti-tail uh, jet pointed towards the sun and now it's actually in the opposite direction to the direction of motion. Uh, now, if the rotation axis is aligned with the direction of the sun, then it means that the object had a permanent day side and a permanent night side as it was rotating. Uh, just think about the Earth. The Earth is uh, rotating almost perpendicular to the direction to the sun, and that's why a given region has daylight, and then that changes to nighttime and so forth. Um, and so in the case of a a rotation direction or axis being aligned with the direction to the sun, that means that the object has a permanent day side on the pole that is facing the sun and a permanent night side on the other side. So there was a jet coming from the permanent day side when the object was approaching the sun. And now, as it's receding from the sun at large distances, suddenly there is an anti-tail jet coming from the opposite pole that was previously in the night side. And so why would there be two bases for the anti-tail that are almost perfectly aligned with the poles? And they would be dormant when they are on the night side. We wouldn't see them, whereas they are active once they are in the day side. Uh, that that is difficult to explain uh, for a variety of reasons. So I'll explain a few, a few of those reasons. First of all, um, the, there is heat conduction within any body, so it's difficult to keep one side of the body uh, completely, you know, at a much lower temperature than the other side. If there is a permanent day side and permanent night side, the night side would also be warmed up. Uh, but uh, more interestingly, how do you collimate a, a jet uh, to within eight degrees if it's coming from the sublimation of a, a pocket of ice on the surface of a rock. You know, that pocket of ice, when it's illuminated by sunlight, would basically create a, a full hemisphere of vapor uh, around it. It wouldn't create a collimated jet. The only way to make a collimated jet is to drill a hole in the ground and sort of like the barrel of a gun uh, shoot the gas out of this hole. But then the chance of sunlight getting into this deep hole is getting small and uh, you know it will just happen for a limited time when the sun is above that hole so uh, it's difficult to get the collimation in a natural situation where you have a pocket of ice warmed up by sunlight and that's what we find in most comments however in this case we see a jet and not only that pointed towards the sun. Not only that, the rotation axis is aligned with the direction of the sun. So all these geometric considerations, they add up 
to a probability of one in four billion. Uh, it's just a very small chance of having these coincidences, uh, you know, line up in a way that will give us the anti-tail both as the object approaches the sun and as the object recedes from the sun. And of course, if in case it's technological, you can imagine a reason for having a jet in the direction of the sun, for example, in case you want to protect uh, the device, the, the spacecraft from uh, the solar wind. You might have a jet that uh, deflects the solar wind from impacting the object. I think uh, it may have been uh, influenced by my white paper to the United Nations arguing that uh, we should monitor with all the assets that we have any interstellar object that has anomalies. That was my recommendation. They didn't uh, embrace it publicly, but ended up uh, with the International Asteroid uh, Warning Network um, to, uh, deciding to coordinate observations from hundreds of telescopes around the globe between uh, the 27th of November and the 27th of January, and I'm very happy they did that. But I'm not, uh, I don't think that they are at the moment worried about any implications for Earth. It's just a, a drill, a practice. However, I'm very happy they collect as much data as possible because once uh, there will be some anomaly, it would be impossible to shove it under the carpet of traditional thinking. And so getting as much data as possible is to the benefit of everyone. Even if it's a rock, we will learn much more about this rock, uh, which happens to be quite rare and unusual. And as I mentioned before, the geometric coincidences of this uh, object already raise is a suspicion that it might not be a rock. I don't think uh, we can do much. Uh, no rocket on Earth can uh, move fast enough to intercept the object un unless it comes extremely close to Earth. Um, but um, I, I don't think there is a risk of it changing direction because it didn't show any indication of that. The non-gravitational acceleration that was measured is really small. You know, it's uh, one part in 10,000 or less uh, than the, sp the acceleration provided by the sun. Uh, so we shouldn't worry necessarily about this object uh, approaching Earth. In fact, I, I don't even think that if it's technological, the purpose of the visit was Earth. It may have been Jupiter because it comes to Jupiter exactly at the distance where Jupiter's gravity dominates over the Sun's gravity. So perhaps it would like to deposit some uh, technological device at the Lagrange point. You know, we placed uh, uh, spacecraft, uh, including the Webb telescope, uh, at uh, the second Lagrange point because you don't need much uh, fuel to maintain that position. Uh, and so perhaps they would do something like that, in which case we can monitor any new object in orbit around Jupiter. Jupiter would be a likely target because it's the most massive planet in the solar system and was visible to anyone far away from the solar system for billions of years. I mean, the, the Earth became interesting, as far as we are concerned, only over the past century. Uh, pr prior to that, we were sort of indistinguishable from nature. The latest uh, space uh, observatory that gave very useful data is the Hubble Space Telescope, and that was obtained on the 30th of November. I expect the Webb Telescope to observe 3A Atlas this week. Uh, we will see what data it provides. Uh, the Webb Telescope is a much bigger telescope, can do spectroscopy and can tell us the speed of the gas in the, uh, the, the anti-tail, the jet that we see. So that would be really interesting. Uh, I would like to see if the speed is bigger than expected for the sublimation of a pocket of ice on the surface of a rock, for example. But I would also like to know the composition of the jet so we can figure out all of these things with the web telescope data. The MAVEN uh, uh, data was shown at the press conference of NASA. Uh, it involved a, a fuzzy image uh, of a, a glow of hydrogen around the uh, 3A Atlas, the first time hydrogen was discovered. Not surprising, because we know there was uh, water, for example, detected by the Webb telescope back in uh, on August uh, 6th. So uh, the existence of hydrogen is not surprising. But what's really strange about MAVEN is that uh, a couple of months later, it, it disappeared. Uh, I mean, it uh, went behind the Mars, at which point we can't communicate with it. But as it came back, there was no signal from it. So NASA is trying to figure out what happened to it. Uh, and uh, before it went behind Mars for the last time, uh, we just uh, had all uh, major instruments on it operating. So 
It's very bizarre that it, uh, you know, uh, more than a decade, 11 years after it was uh, launched, we lost it. The question is uh, whether that uh, occurrence was uh, just a random fluke or somehow related to 3A Atlas. Uh, closest to Earth, but it's within a distance of 269 million miles, so uh, kilometers, sorry. Um, and um, what I hope to learn is more about the speed of the anti-tail jet and, and the composition of it so that we can figure out how much mass it carries uh, and uh, whether it's uh, produced naturally. Uh, and I guess these would be the most important clues about the mechanism that makes those uh, those jets and uh, also the interior of uh, 3 Atlas if the jet carry a substantial fraction of the mass of 3 Atlas. So